I do think that um, we're really understanding what we want to finish this job this season. And so everyone enjoyed that moment. You know, that was great. That was a great series, uh, a great uh, game seven. Uh, so I just felt that right now, let the players uh, enjoy it. The coaches enjoy it. Uh, take today. Some, a lot of guys went to the ballpark and rest in recovery and treated themselves up. But uh, I, I guess I, I'm waiting for my Tommy Lasorda speech uh, after we win this thing. The emotion we saw from you, Dave, after the game, how much of that was you were that close to having it end and came back to win it? How much of that was just the bigger picture of everything you guys went through so far this year? Yeah, I, I just it was kind of uh, unexpected. Um, I usually kind of keep them more in check. Uh, I, I guess it's just, you know, what was at stake and how we had to fight scratch and claw for three straight games. And, you know, if one thing doesn't go our way, you know, that's it for us. And we put a lot, as did the Braves, uh, into this season. And uh, just where we were at and what I know our players and coaches and everyone has gone through, you know. And so to kind of overcome that um, and just kind of looking at, I guess, where we were at in summer camp and before that where there might not have been baseball and just a lot of emotions that were going through my uh, head. And I guess it just – kind of came out teams that get on runs like this they always say oh it's been a magical year it's been a magical ride you know and the emotions hit you on that stage and you happen to say this is our year is that part of the emotion of thinking like everything that's built up in the three out of four years going to the world series it's got to be time yeah yeah and i just think that we're ready for this moment and i think that you can see it whether on the field off the field just kind of the way guys are talking the way they're playing um, they've learned some, we've learned some, we've all learned some hard lessons and, and we've had to grow. And uh, I just think that we're ready for this moment. Um, and yeah, I, I just talked about a lot of things, but you know, my point being is that it's this year it, it's, it's uh, yeah, the job is not done. And I just see it very clear with this group of guys. How stressful is it to manage a game seven? Yeah. You just don't have, um, you know, you don't have uh, a lot of margin and, you know, unfortunately, fortunately, I've been I've managed a few game sevens, <laughs> some uh, do or die games. And, um, you know, some games you, you just kind of hope that you can keep it close. And it, it got away from us, you know, whether three or four runs is getting away and we just can't recover or, you know, you kind of keep it close and, and it worked out. Um, so I, I'm just proud of our guys and they made plays and pitches when they needed to. We got hits when we needed to. So um just happy for all those guys and the coaches and front office and everybody. You've been involved in game sevens before as a player, but can you imagine having an MVP that goes 0 for 5 in the final game and still wins the MVP? Yeah, you know, it, it's just, it just, I guess, no. Um, it just speaks <laughs> to how great he was, I guess, the first six games. And um, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, what a postseason. I know it was the AL, uh, NLCS MVP, but man, and you're not even baking in the defense. There are some tough plays that Corey made uh, that just don't really show up in the box or they're just converted outs. But, man, those are some tough plays. Um, but, man, what a what a player. And on the biggest stage to see him kind of come alive and even seeing his interviews and, like, I never knew he talked this much. It, it's crazy. <laughs> it's, uh, or he's capable it's, uh, of human emotion. I mean, even emotion. And he's saying he's having fun. And it's just – this is like a different person that I've known for five years. So, but it's kind of like we're talking about growth. Corey is growing as well. It, it, it's fun to see. He's supposed to be the follow-up interview after you, so you can hang in your office there and maybe uh, take a listen to him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, you mentioned uh, the defense that he played. I think one of the big differences, one of the big separators in the series those last few days was the defense, not just sound defense, but loud, amazing, game-changing plays from different guys across the diamond. It's ridiculous. I mean, obviously, a friend of mine, the Justin Turner, uh, uh, double play, diving, selling out, to then have the uh, the heads up, to then get the uh, the trail runner in Riley, and then for Corey to be in position at third base to field the throw, and then you're talking about you know Cody Bellinger, uh, all the plays that he's made, Robin Homers, and then we talked about Corey. There's some in between backhand plays that he's had to make those plays. The Jock Peterson play a couple nights ago with Kenley, and then you're talking about uh, Mookie. I mean, what more can you say about this guy? You know, every, one night I say that's one of the biggest defensive plays, and then the next night he makes a better play, yeah. and then the next night it's a better play. So, I mean, the superlatives. What else can you say? 
Yeah, go get them, man. Go get them. World Series coming yeah. up, third time in four years, and this is the time it's going to be a different ending, huh? All right, fellas. Thank you. Thank right, you. Yep. So I guess they're just going to shuffle them in and out of here. Now we're going to get yeah. this energy Corey Seager coming up in a minute. I can't wait. <laughs> going to be interesting we got Clayton Kershaw on the mound in game one Joe so this is a it's going to be great I don't think it's redemption for him I think his postseason resume is building now and this could be the crescendo as we go into this series It'll be interesting to watch I mean Tampa Bay is a team that does it its own way right I mean it's a really good pitching staff but deployed pretty uniquely yeah you can you can see a starter go six or seven innings and you can see a starter go two innings and then the next night they can have an opener they they will match up throughout the whole game and they'll start early. Even if you think somebody on the mound is their starter, they could go forever. They, they've had Charlie Morton at, at low pitch count, like in the sixties, throwing a shutout and they take him out. And uh, in game seven. Yeah. And so, uh, and then their offense, their offense, if we don't walk people, which our staff doesn't, their offense, a walk is a big part of their offense. They have a lot of strikeouts in their offense. They've got some power and some hot hitters. But it's not a consistent, long, deep lineup like the Dodgers that can really scare you. It actually, for me, is a lineup where you can pick a hot hitter or two and make sure they don't beat you because there's not a lot around those guys. Yeah. Um, you've played in some Game 7s. You've been a part of Game 7s. What was it like for you, having had that experience and knowing what it's like, to watch those guys on that stage last night? It's getting emotional for me like it is for Dave, and it's much more personal for Dave Roberts being the manager and being back to the World Series again and feeling probably cheated from 17 and then the disappointments in the other years. But I think game seven for me, living vicariously through the guys, is all about trying to stay as calm as possible. And uh, I almost could read guys' faces because I've been inside their bodies, and you can tell the guys that are dealing with it in different ways and you some kind can tell the guys that it's kind of consuming a little bit the pressure and I really felt that with the two young guys at the beginning of the of the game with May and Gonsolin that these are guys that are tremendous strike throwers in the regular season we applauded them for how they attack the strike zone I mean Clayton Kershaw was like third in the league third in major leagues and strike percentage but Tony Gonsolin and Dustin May were right there with them like two percentage points lower and so when you think about Clayton and pounding the strike zone and, and those kids, I just saw in their face different facial expressions, different reactions to ball strike calls, to hits, to walks, than the normal facial expressions that I saw in the regular season. And I'm just hoping that game seven experience really helps them kind of evaluate themselves and the emotions that worked and the emotions that didn't work when they move into this World Series situation. You know, the other side of that is a guy like Kike Hernandez or somebody like Jock Peterson, who didn't have very good regular seasons. We've seen Jock time and time again throughout his career be great in October. Hernandez didn't have a great regular season. He'd be the first to tell you that. Comes off of the bench and hits that home run last night. It's his eighth career postseason home run. There are certain guys that are just built for that stage. I'm not diagnosing anyone, but I'll diagnose myself. I think. I think the big games are the best riddling in the world. <laughs> it's just, it's a great thing that takes somebody that loves information and loves everything that's going on around them. And you just, a bomb could go off when I was pitching in big games because I wouldn't even hear it. I was so locked in from the pressure, the excitement, the wanting to be there, the wanting to do it for the city, for the fans, for your teammates, for everything that you want to do it for. And I think with Jock, I think with Kike, you can see them, though. they're kind of fun-loving guys. They can really kind of experiment with their batting stances at times. They can chase some pitches that you wonder why are they swinging at it. But all of a sudden, that next level of adrenaline and concentration seems to really kick in with them both. And you could have a bomb go off next to those two. And I don't think they'd hear it if they were looking for a fastball. God forbid that happens. We don't even hear it. <laughs> That's true. What's your favorite moment from last night? What are you going to remember most about Game 7? Uh, there were so many little turning points. I mean, we were on the brink in those first two innings. I mean, the ridiculous base running by the Braves and the double play by Justin Turner, the catch by Mookie Wilson to keep Trinan really on the horse and on the mound. Uh, Julio Arias with his three innings, the whole bullpen with Gratterall and Trinan. I think they threw six innings of hitless ball. It yes. was, you know, on two strikeouts. So the ball is getting put in play. 
it was it was just one of those games that uh, it was a classic game seven. It was a come from behind victory again. And uh, it was fun to watch. And then the, then the two home runs at the end. I mean, Kike's home run, talk about a loud blast. And then Belly battling. That wasn't a Belly, oh, he got a mistake early in the count. He had to fight off like three pitches and good takes to get to the mistake to hit that home run. And their reactions were fantastic. I mean, Belly, oh, yeah. Belly just walked it right out of the box. I mean, I said it's not a walk-off home run, but they are in their whites, and it's not quite light, light enough to be a – a walk-off home run, but it was an exciting home run. I think we got our guy here. He's hiding his hair, though. You can't yeah. <laughs> get there forever, man. The MVP of the NLCS, Corey Seager. Corey, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing okay. We were just talking with Doc about how much emotion and energy you're showing lately. It's like we're seeing a different guy coming out of his shell. We didn't know you were capable of all these facial expressions and everything. I know, right? That was a, that was a really fun series, you know, all the way through. Um, we had a lot of fun. We enjoyed it. We rode our highs and we, we came in on top. You came into the season kind of sitting back nice and easy with the Mookie Betts signing. And everybody said the sleeper on this team that could be the MVP is Corey Seager. Uh, there's no sleeping on you now. You got all these interview requests, I'm sure. And you're going to have to compartmentalize everything so that you can keep your energy up for the World Series. Yeah, you know, I, I like being in the background. You know, it, it, it's, it treats me better, I think. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're excited for where we're at. We're looking forward to this series, and we're, we're hoping to come out on top this year. Do you have a favorite moment from last night that will stick with you forever? Yeah, honestly, Kike's pinch hit home run. Um, that was really cool. That was a huge moment. Um, seeing his reaction, I don't think I've ever seen him get that excited before. Um, and he's a very emotional guy, you know, he, he shows it and last night was a different level. And that was, that was, that was a cool moment for sure. His, he, you mentioned his emotion, but also we joke around with you about seeing you way more outwardly energetic. I've never seen him so intensely excited. Like he had yeah. his game face on that I had never seen from him. Yeah, you're right. It, it was very intense. There was no messing around that time. Well, you know, what's it like? Take the fans to a place for, you know, when the guy's got a no hitter going, you're as a fielder. No, my gosh, I got to field everything. When it's down to three outs and you get two of the ground balls to go to a World Series, what's the emotion like to stand out there at shortstop and think about, you know, I want the ball hit to me? Yeah, you know, you do. You, you don't ever not want to hit to you. As soon as you start doing that, you get complacent, you get lazy, you get timid, you know, it, it, it's not fluid. So, in those moments, you're you're always expecting it. You always want it, and you want to be the guy to to make those outs. What's the transition been like from enjoying and celebrating the Game Seven win to shifting your focus forward to Game One of the World Series? Yeah, you know, today was kind of the day you shift back. Um, last night we enjoyed it. We we needed to enjoy it. It's a moment that you know you won't ever forget. But today's refocusing, regrouping, and and looking forward to tomorrow. Are you somebody that can fall asleep right away, curl up in a ball, or do you lay there in bed, toss and turn, and watch the sunrise? No, no, I'm definitely a guy who can fall asleep right away. I'm <laughs> fortunate enough for that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, Corey, we appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. We'll cut you loose. We know you got plenty to do to get ready for Tampa Bay, but congratulations on everything thus far, and we can't wait to watch you in this next week and a half. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So can't wait to watch him, Oral. Can't wait to watch all those guys. I mean, it's it'd be easy to take it for granted, right? Three World Series trips in four years. But I think that the way that they came back in this NLCS, the way that they got to the World Series, I don't know about for you, but for me, it's like reinvigorated. Not that we should have needed that, but it's made it extra special when three times in four years, it'd be like, okay, here they are again. Now this, this feels extra special given everything they've gone to get here. And hopefully this time the ending is different. Yeah. 2020 has been so hard on all of us and we were so glad to get baseball back. So that became like exciting moments. And then the season went on and you could just say the Dodgers are going to be in the playoffs no matter what. And then you get into the playoffs and you go, wow, we've got an extra level of playoffs. And then we make it all the way here now to the World Series. And I'm now in a place that I have to watch myself emotionally because I am so invested, like you, Joe, in this team and in these guys and their own legacies. You know, thinking about what Justin Turner told us on our, on our podcast about 
anybody that he encounters in the city of LA or around and all the good work that he does, they still say to him sometime in that conversation, when are you guys going to win it? And I don't want those guys to face that question anymore. I want Kenley Jansen, Clayton Kershaw, Justin Turner, all these guys that have been through it. I, I want them to get a ring and I want those conversations for the rest of their life to be memorable like they have been for Kirk and Mike Sosha and me and all Steve Sachs and Mickey Hatcher, all the guys from 88. People greet us with a smile and tell us a positive story about where they were, or how exciting it was, or what they did with their family or their dad or their mom. And I want these guys to, uh, to us get that conversation. That would be very, very important for them. And I think it'd be important for the whole organization. Awesome. We're going to be able to hear you, see you and the guys on pre and post game coverage on Sportsnet LA. And actually in about an hour, right? That's why you're all dialed up. You look yep, beautiful. I'm full makeup, guys. You know, hair's tidied up, full makeup. So yeah, I don't usually look like this. You don't need it. You don't need any of that. <laughs> Thanks, partner. Always good to see you, buddy. We'll talk. All right. Take care, fans. Go Dodgers.